Hello and thanks for dropping in on another episode of My Mountain Adventures. I appreciate those of you who have emailed me or dropped me a line uh, expressing your interest in my project. It's uh, been rewarding so far to put together a few videos and share some things with you and I hope to continue to do so. Previously we've talked about several different things. We've been outside talking about snowshoes. We've talked about the fur trade journals. We've talked about documenting your persona and things. Today I wanted to share with you a, a quick book review. You know, when we, as we talked about research in the past, we go online, we assemble different uh, records from fur trade journals. I in the past have had dozens of different uh, ledgers floating around. I keep them in my, my fur trade trunk and frequently refer to them. And I'm often going on the computer looking up different journals and doing keyword searches. And that's very rewarding. But it's been uh, kind of exciting to find a new book that a couple of friends of mine have put together. The book is called Supply and Demand, The Ledgers and Gear of the Western Fur Trade by Oliver McCloskey and Scott Doc Ivory Olson. Let me see if I can give you a good close-up of that cover. Hopefully, hopefully you can see it well there. I will, uh, of course, at the end of the video put a point of contact where you can find this book. But what it really essentially is is a collection of many period fur trade ledgers from rendezvous, from forts, fort inventories, um, St. Louis ledgers and papers. If I look at the contents here, in fact, it talks about the Mountaineers in chapter 1. Then it goes to the Astorian years, the Ashley years, the rendezvous years, Fort Union trading post, the Fort Hall ledgers, Bent's Fort and Uncompagre, and various trappers' ledgers, St. Louis ledgers and papers, and then they wrap up with conclusions from the fur trade era. And as I said, this is an excellent compilation of the many different ledgers that are available out there for us to use as primary documentation sources when we do research for the Western fur trade. Uh, here's a couple, here's a good picture of the two Rascapellians that did this book. Let me see if I can give you a good picture of them. That's Oliver and Doc. Um, Oliver lives down in uh, central Utah in Cedar City and makes most of his living by tan doing brain tanning. And he, he tans and sells upwards to 300 hides a year. One of the sources I use for good brain tan. And Doc, he lives up in Montana, makes his living as a dentist Thus the name Doc Ivory. And I'd really recommend this book to you as a great source for, for ledgers. I've been very surprised myself as I've read through the different pages of some of the interesting things that jump off the ledgers that we sometimes wouldn't have thought of as being available to the mountaineers in the West. The one I'm looking at here is an 1810 journal, or excuse me, an 1810 ledger. Uh, by Al from Alexander McKay, and he purchased these items to go west to Fort Ar uh, Astoria in 1810. And there's a lot of interesting things here. Um, now, of course, he was planning on uh, supplying a fort and decking it out, so he, maybe he, he took things that we wouldn't commonly expect to see at a fur trade rendezvous, or a mountain men rendezvous, things like uh, wine glasses and tumblers, pint bottles, um, a nutmeg grater, let's see, clasp knives, excellent stuff here. 100 matches, he says, in 1810. Now, I'm not going to suggest that matches were widely available in 1810, but it mentions here 100 matches. Now, I'm not exactly sure if those were the igniting Lucifer-type matches that we later uh, find out of Bent's Fort, but interesting that they are that matches are here on this list. So that would take a little bit of research for us to find out exactly what kind of matches those were. He talks about coarse towels, of course, powder horns, things like that we'd expect. Number six, chocolate. Number twelve, portable soup. We know that portable soup was, was similar to our bouillon today. And I've made portable soup by just boiling down the uh, or cooking down the leftovers from a roast or a turkey and getting a hard gelatinous uh, well, that ge gelatinous substance you get at the bottom of the pan, then drying that out into portable soup, then you can grind that up and, 
and reconstitute that later in your pot when you're out on the trail. Let's see what else he might have listed here that's really interesting. Um, half dozen of Lee's pills, whatever that, those are. Um, okay, well, uh, that's interesting in, in the Astorian ledgers there. If we some, flip through this uh, for, for my period of time, the, the, ron, the classic rendezvous period of the Mountain Men, we'd want to flip up to the Ashley years, 1820 to 1830, and here we find a wealth of information. It's even broken down by names of individuals who ordered things like uh, Etienne Provost and uh, Labonte and Logan and Cunningham and different folks who, who ordered stuff from Ashley to be brought back out to subsequent rendezvous. Again, a, a, a variety of interesting things that jumps off the ledgers here. Of course, we'd expect things like knives, traps, powder, lead, guns, blankets, those sorts of things, lots of tobacco, sugar and coffee, combs, buttons, uh, let's see, breech cloths, breech clouts, more sugar, lots of beads and knives, ribbons, hooks, fish hooks, um, which we'll, we'll, we'll visit again in the future in a, in a video I expect to do on primitive fishing. Anyway, um, well, there's another excellent picture of Doc and Oliver. Somehow they got their horse laid down. They're doing a, a reenactment, a little, a little recreation shot of a battle scene there. I hope, hopefully you can see that. I don't know if you can or not. If you can't see those pictures good, then hopefully I've intrigued you enough that you'll want to run out and, and buy this book again. Supply and Demand, The Ledgers and Gear of the Western Fur Trade. An excellent resource for doing research on the, the Western Fur Trade, the Mountaineer period. Again, hope you're enjoying some of the videos. Uh, if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see, go ahead and send me a comment on, the, on YouTube there. Be happy to visit those. I do have some plans to get out here soon and get some outdoors videos done. Hey, thanks for dropping by and visiting, and we'll see you again soon. So long.